look in the past, Bran, we know how many beers we had. This is the Bro Force Squad back at it again with Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 4. I'm Matt, he's Brian, and we also have Ronnie. By now you know our criteria, so just like the Night King at Winterfeld, no bullshit, let's get right into this shit. So with acting and cast, let's throw it to the lab, the mad scientist, Brian Banner. I actually didn't think the acting was Game of Thrones. Uh, it was subpar for Game of Thrones, honestly. I thought Daenerys, Daenerys wasn't very good. Um, Cersei, I thought she was fine, I guess. Um, she didn't really do much. Yeah, she didn't really do much, but I, I just, I didn't feel her menace, her, she's this crazy mad queen uh, quite as much. Um John was kind of a little bitch, so there was that. He's been a little bitch for like, oh, sorry, just keep going. Nah, that's really all I have to say. Like you brought it, it up. Yeah, it was subpar. I, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Ronnie? For all my complaints about this episode, and I have a couple, the acting in the, the cast wasn't, you know, they're only, they're told what to do from the writers and the directors. That wasn't my biggest problem with this episode. I thought, um, you know, you know, Tormund was awesome, right? Like, he, he breaks down crying when Brienne chooses Jamie, which that part I hated. But, you know, Tormund was, he's always a fan favorite character. Uh, he always delivers. I thought Ghost was a great actor. For some reason, John couldn't just fucking pet him like the good boy he is. <laughs> so, bullshit. But Ghost is always the goodest boy. Um, I mean, just there, there wasn't anything to take home about, like, overly positive negatively about the cast this time around everyone does what they do they just showed up still struggle sometimes with the emotion um and again i'm not sure if just that's in her range but uh yeah that's that's the that's all i'll say about that all right since you brought up danny i'll just feed off you banner i disagree with you i don't think it's her acting as a wwe fan i don't think they're giving her anything to fucking do they built her up for seven fucking seasons and now they're just like, unless I'm missing something, it just seems like she's kind of on the fucking back burner and she's going to be used for a huge death uh, later. Sure, bad for no reason. Uh, something good about this though. I, I like Braun's character arc going through where everyone was kind of cheering for him because he was just kind of a vile snake <laughs> bastard, but now everyone's pissed at him for being a vile snake bastard and threatening to kill Jamie um, and the little guy. So I, I mean, it's kind of like me liking Jamie since episode one. He's been like that the whole fucking time. It's just basically you're reading in to the story arc. But I kind of like how they're basically – his character arc didn't change. Just who he went after changed, and people don't like it anymore because he's kind of just basically like, yeah, man, once this is all over, I want to fucking have land or something because you guys won't give a shit about me. You just want guns for hire. Yeah, he's no. literally the same thing the entire, some, from season one or season two, whenever he was working for Tyrion. It was all yeah. about the – Always, it was. He's he's my favorite character, and he's been my favorite character for a long time now. I love that uh, Jamie saw the sun and sobered up and found out the chick that he hit on the bar last night isn't that hot, and said, "Hey, I got an early meeting. I got to get out of here. Where's my pants?" Uh, I loved his little acting in that. Was anyone else like? So for seven seasons, we're all like, "Oh, tit, sex, let's go." When that when she started getting undressed, I looked at my wife's like, so how was your day at work? I was so fucking uninterested with that. I'm like, close my eyes, like fast forward through this. I do not care about yeah, this. Yeah, I hated it just from the pure stance of it felt so fan fiction-y to me. Like, I, it's not about like the sex part of it, whatever. Like, here you got Brienne being like the strong, independent character for eight seasons. And then she gets laid once and she's like, oh, don't leave me. Oh, my God. I love you so much. She's like, dude, come on. Like, that was too much to me. I couldn't. I, I almost, like, was cringing so hard that whole that whole scene. Can I say that is less forced than John and Danny's fucking love interest, though? Because that's just been forced down our throat the whole time. I would say it's less forced than that. I would have much rather watched Tormund and Brienne. Get yeah, but here's the thing. Watch- There's a difference between... Jamie and Brienne of Tarth and John and Daenerys. John and Daenerys, like it actually makes sense. They're both Targaryen, like that's history. There's going to be a power struggle for the throne there. With Brienne and Jamie, literally, it doesn't fucking matter. No, it was, like I don't I said, know. Maybe it was written so she could get laid one time. 
don't maybe know. Jamie's thinking like Paul Walker's dad in varsity blues. Be like, think about how good this kid's going to be in eighth grade fucking football in Texas. I don't know. <laughs> going right into story. <laughs> Banner, sorry you're taking a drink. Ronnie, <laughs> catch us up on the story right. for this episode. Well, you know, for Brandon episode two or episode one going, we don't have much time for any of this. And <laughs> only six episodes this season. There sure was a lot of time wasting in this episode. Uh, the first 45 minutes in the episode, we're still in Winter Winterfell. We get to see the celebration, um, you know, meal. And, uh, you know, we get to see, you know, a Baratheon come back and everything. And it's all kind of awkward. And you get it. But you're like, also, why are we wasting so many scenes on this? And then Gendry pledging his love to Arya. And, and again, like 35 minutes into it, I was like, what are we doing? Um, and then all of a sudden, we finally leave Winterville, and then we fast travel again. You know, we just jump at it, and all of a sudden, there's Euron and his damn fleet, who's, uh, you know, invincible, and they can kill a dragon from behind a rock and cove, or no one else can see them with perfect shots, yet Danny is, at one point, one-on-one -on -one with all of them, straight on, and they miss her entirely. So that's also awesome. And then all of a sudden we're in uh, King's Landing again at the end. And King's Landing looks like nothing we've ever seen in the eight seasons of the show. King's Landing has always had water and greenery outside of it. And this time they're in a desert. So that was weird. It looked like uh, Achilles v. Hector and Troy. It looked exactly yeah. kind of what it looked like. It looked exactly like I know, that. I'm not getting into the story because I know we're going to talk about it. But if I'm going to say something, why the hell did Xerxes just not destroy all of them right there? That goes against everything she Because they still have two episodes left. Yeah, yeah okay. she knows. Then yeah. I guess we should have stayed in Winterfell for another hour and a half and watched more awkward sex. She had a Lamaze class to get to, that's why. Banner, uh, story? Yeah, I, I mean, I echo everything that, that Cycli said. I mean, it was... This wasn't the chess piece... Them moving the chess pieces around like they did in episode one. Episode one, I like. They were moving the chess pieces around. They were putting people where they needed to put them for the big Winterfell um, fight, as well as they, they were just tickling our balls a little bit for with Cersei, and for whatever reason, she wanted elephants. This one, I, I don't know. It, we had weird, awkward scenes in Winterfell, like, oh, yay, we won, but now we're mad at each other and everything and i'm john's too much of a good person to still get laid by denarius because they're cousins or whatever even though it didn't bother him before he knew that so what's the difference now um, sansa and her telling Tyrion that john of all time do what Oh yeah. Shortest secret of all time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Swear you it. Swear you won't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I. She's savage. Honestly, if she ends up on the Iron Throne, I would not be mad. Um, but yeah, I agree. You have this dragon that's supposed to be all awesome, and we just shoot it with a giant bow and arrow. But then we have another dragon that we shoot thirty bow and arrows at, and we can't fucking hit it. So that was a little weird. And why didn't Danny turn around and, you know, attack them? That was also really weird. That pissed me off. She's just like, oh, okay, I'm just not going to do anything about that. When the dragon died or later? Yeah, she immediately turned around away from the fleet. It looked like she was going to go on attack from behind the fleet. And instead she decides to ignore them. I don't know. Maybe the air traffic controller was saying she can't go east. I don't fucking. I didn't know. I didn't get that either. It was either. all for plot. It was so. It pissed me off. All right, Matt. What about you? The winds are coming from the south. I'm sorry. You can't fly that way. The, the one. The one thing I'll say about this fucking story, and this has been this whole season. I haven't brought it up, but I'm gonna fucking bring it up. And I know this is Game of Thrones. It's not believable, but. You made me kind of believe that dragons could exist. You made me believe in a Lord of Light with a fucking flying sword that can bring people back from the dead. Fuck, I believe that you can have wolves as pets around civilians and they're not going to fucking bite people. Uh, I can you... attest that's that's actually not true. You can't do that. HOA frowned upon it. <laughs> okay, well, this is definitely not believable because this doesn't happen in real life. Sansa would not hate Danny just because Danny has more power and is hotter than her. Chicks don't fucking do that. And I don't understand why Game of Thrones has set this up the whole time. There's no reason for Sansa to fucking hate her, other than she's just hotter and has more power. So, unless this is going to lead to something, I'm really pissed off at this story that they've no. set up ever since the first episode of the season. There's no fucking reason for this at all. 
unless I, she has no reason to even be really against the Targaryen. She's been with every house, you know, around and knows that they're all as can corrupt as the next person. Danny has given her no reason at all to hate her, but she just fucking hates her. And now she's trying to get John on the fucking throne. It makes no fucking sense to me. No, it's pointless because I, I so many people are like, oh, Danny's turning back. Dude, if it wasn't for Danny, the North would all be completely annihilated. Right? She sacrificed her Dothraki, her Unsullied. She did so much for everyone, and they're so fucking ungrateful. It's pissing me off. And what really makes me mad about this story now is that the Night King's only plot device serviced from episode one of season one was to essentially weaken Danny's army. So that when her and Cersei have the showdown next episode, they are on equal playing fields. That's it. That was the point of the Night King. Yeah. yeah. So that Danny would sacrifice her army. I don't understand that, the problem. That's where the story is losing me. What's that, Banner? I don't, don't, under- have I don't understand the problem. <laughs> All right, defend it. I want to hear it. Let's go. I don't understand it. I think that it's perfectly fine to have a big, awesome character, and then we're just going to kill him The basically the first time that we really see him in action. I, I think that's fine. We can do that. <laughs> Can we agree I mean, we the can. Night King and all the White Walkers are just a fucking huge-ass red herring, pretty much? Yes. Yes. Pisses me off. They're more all of, right, like, a white scene. herring. <laughs> uh, best scene, Ronnie? I, I really didn't have one, I'll be honest with you. The whole episode. This is actually the first episode this season I haven't rewatched. Um, I was doing a lot of cringing throughout the episode, a lot of um, eye-rolling. Um... I can't really sit here and say there was something I particularly enjoyed the whole time because even if a scene was delivered well, like Missandei's death and Grey Worm's reaction, reaction, that was fantastic. But it pissed me off so bad how they got there that I wasn't enjoying that scene as much as I could have been, you know. Um, so that for me was a big problem. Um, and then I really, you know, I, fine, I'll go back. I enjoyed Tormund. I enjoyed his. His emotional breakdown when Brienne chose someone else over him. That was my favorite part, because I love him. Banner? <laughs> uh, I liked when Tyrion and uh, Varys, or... Uh, Varys. Varys. Yeah, whatever the fuck his name is, are talking in the boat on the way to King's yeah. Landing or whatever, and him basically saying, like, hey, he's Targaryen. How many people know? Eight people know. <laughs> well, that, we done fucked up then, because that's too many people. That They're... <laughs> Their interaction, and I've always enjoyed their back and forth. Um, I mean, they're clearly the two smartest people left in the show now. Um, and them back and forth and, and them discussing that, I thought was, was probably the only good, real, really good dialogue in the whole, whole show. All right, my best scene was the dragon dying, because <laughs> even if you hate that scene... Dude, it was bitching when it hit the water. I was like, okay, that's pretty fucking coolly directed and stuff. I don't know what Danny was doing up there. She was texting or, you know, sending a tweet. Don't but text and dragon. She was, three she was pissed dragons. off she lost her Starbucks cup. She couldn't find where it was. I'm not even going to touch that because it's... Uh, it, <laughs> there's way more shit. If you're going to get pissed off about it, I'm like, I get it. People get paid to find that, but I don't know. I, I didn't even fucking notice it. I so. didn't notice it either. I'm not going to sit here and be like, I fucking, if you didn't notice it, don't talk shit about it. That's all I'm going to fucking say. If you did notice it, you can. But, dude, she's lost two fucking dragons. How the fuck do you do? She's mismanaged this army since the beginning of fucking time. The the last dragon, if this was Kevin Durant, he'd be fucking flying over to fucking Cersei right now. He's like, fuck this shit. Like, you're but that, you know whose fault that dragons? is? That's Tyrion's fault. She's listened to Tyrion on all of this advice, and all of the advice has gotten her dragons killed. Remember how old Elena... Olena said, just go be a dragon. Like, she wanted to just go fucking take King's Landing. None of this would happen if she had done what she wanted to do. She needs to stop listening to Tyrion. It's true. I, I would want, if we go back to acting real quick, I did want a little more emotion out of her, though, whenever this dragon died. It just kind of seemed like I lost another one of my children. It's like, oh, she just kind of expects it now or something. I don't really know, but... She just doesn't do well on the emotion. Okay, going into theories, because a couple of our theories are still alive. Um, I'll just bring it up. Like, Gintry got his fucking role. I mean, I, I brought that theory up last time, and I mean, he got his role. He's lord of fucking whatever right now. So he's one step above. He went from middle manager to shift manager. So he's one step above for maybe making a claim to the Iron Throne and getting a fucking army and having this dispatched. Uh, what other theories you guys got, Banner? There's not enough time. That's my problem with all these theories. 
I don't I mean, dude, I was, one thing can though. fucking happen. There's two episodes left, and we've seen how slow it's been. All it has to do is Bran has to fucking roll his eyes and be like, he's the prince's promise, and then it all fucking turns around. <laughs> okay, so my theory is because most of mine have gone out the window. Um, you know, I, I think I think I thought the writers were going to be a little more creative. Now I'm at this point where I think they're going for what everyone already thinks in the obvious. I think they're going to have Danny go mad and kill a lot of innocent people in, in King's Landing. And John's going to kill her. I think that's what they've been building up for this whole time. And he's going to become a queen slayer. Um, you know, I think I want to imagine there's more to do with Bran. I thought there was going to be more to do with Bran. Is he the Lord of Light? What is he? I think his story arc might be done. Are we ever going to see him again? I don't even know. The way they left everyone in Winterfell. So I think I think the writers have themselves a hole with this six episode thing. And I think it's going to go pretty vanilla on us. And John's going to kill Danny. Banner. I think it's going to be opposite. I think Danny's going to kill John. Wow. She has literally been groomed her entire life to do whatever it takes to. I mean, she let yeah, Jason no. Momoa rape her. I mean, I mean, I would too. But she has literally done everything, <laughs> anything to sit on that Iron Throne. She thinks that it's her birthright. I don't think she's going to let Jon Snow stop her, even if he is a good lay. Um, but I also think somehow in the end, Tyrion is still going to end up on the Iron Throne. I'm riding that till the end. Again, I don't know how we're going to get there, but it's going to happen. I'm, I'm starting to think he gets executed. I think somehow, I keep going back to George R. R. Martin saying it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. I think, I think Danny and John are going to, I think she's going to somehow be pregnant with John's kid somehow. What I thought too. And but I usually, think when a together. guy loves a girl, uh, they go into the bedroom together, and that's how a baby comes. That's See, how you I get pregnant. Sex. More, I thought that was the case too, but like again, we're two episodes left. I thought, you know, in my theory before the season started, like the season was going to take over a couple months, right? Like because it takes a month to get up to Winterfell and back with the army. I thought, you know, she'd be showing by now. Like she would know she's pregnant. Like I don't know how you're going to. I mean, she would just have to say it or something, and. If Bran could somehow tell it was a boy, and then both of them die, but then the, that kid is the princess promise because it's got yeah. Stark blood, it's got a lot of Targaryen blood. That's that's what I'm guessing right now, and I I really think John might kill Sansa <laughs> because now John or he's gonna let Danny do it because now it's like, do fans really care anymore? I mean, she's kind of was a bitch last fucking episode, dude. I love Sansa. I thought she was awesome. That's just because she's in your shitty X Men movie coming out this summer. <laughs> I just don't get her motivation, honestly. Like that's my problem. <laughs> no comment. I, I, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> Dude, honestly, with this these theories, I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. I I don't think they're setting us up for a holy shit like Tyrion takes the throne. I think that someone's gonna take the throne like Danny for like a day, and then she's gonna give birth and die or something like that. See, I like that because that's like Liana style, right? Like, that and that's thing. bittersweet. Yeah. She did get the throne for a day, then she gave birth to the princess. The princess promised. John's like, I'll just kind of look after it, or Tyrion. Or someone will be like, I'll look after it till this kid's older. Yeah, but that's the problem, though. That means she's if she's like three or four months pregnant. We got five more months to go <laughs> in two episodes. I uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. That's what I was thinking. It's just, it's just too obvious. She, they're casting her out though. I mean, I swear to God, she just doesn't have the fucking heat and the buildup she's had in the last seven seasons. They're just kind of just leaving her out there. Just Can basically, like, she's me, here now. But this is HBO's biggest moneymaker. Why are they only giving us six episodes? That's what I honestly can't figure out. There's enough money in this. And right now it's kind of dragging that I'm kind of glad they're ending it too. I mean, but I'm, I understand. I'm happy they're ending it, but to me, the story they created deserved better exposition and better. Yeah. Rest. Then having you got to think though, it's not two episodes; it's three more hours. It's three yeah. more hours. That's like two fucking movies or a Marvel movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll see. That's all I got. Is anyone else have anything to add? I don't want to sound like overly critic. I know I need to enjoy the ride. I appreciate what Game of Thrones is. 
it's got lost in the back of our minds. We can't get it out. Yeah. All right, guys. We've been the Bro Four Squad. That is our Game of Thrones review for episode four. We got two more, so join us for five and six. Check out our website, brofoursquad.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at Bro Four Squad and like or follow us on Letterbox. I don't know. That's Jeff's thing. I don't do whatever that is, so you can follow all our content. It's spelled weird, also. So uh, don't get Matt, confused. I'm Matt. He's Brian. He's Ronnie. We'll see you next time. Wait, how do you spell letterbox? How else do you spell that? He, it's spelled weird. It's like missing letters and shit. <laughs> it shows how much I know about it.